Hey guys, back for more? A couple of weeks ago I posted a poll for which one of these I should make. You bought it, I built it. Let's go. So I started with the tavern itself by cutting wall, roof and so on from cardstock or cardboard. Despite how much I use this stuff, I still don't even know what exactly these are called in English. Once I had the exact shape, I used a bunch of steering sticks to represent the wooden beams and wooden detailing all over the building. Now I'm by far nowhere near to be an architect or a construction engineer. I place these according to my basic logic, bit of a visual memory and common sense. After I'm done with the lumber work, I started making the two doors and 12 windows I planned for this building, out of cardboard and steering sticks. In this build, for the first time, I tried adding a border, or a frame if you will, around the windows and the doors, and I was pleased with the look. I tried making it with bending the sticks to fit the top curve of the doors, but I failed. I also decided it would take forever to cut and glue sticks for each windows frame, so I went with good old cardboard stripes. You can see what I'm talking about here with the door frames. It looks much cleaner and tidier when there is a frame in between the stonework and the wooden door. At this point, the building looked way too symmetrical, so I made an extension part and realized I forgot to add a um, smokestack, so I built one. Before I started on laying the bricks, I needed to tackle the roof. I kinda wanted to go with laying sticks to represent a wooden roof, because it would take far far less time to do so. Then. I wanted to try a thatched roof, but again it would take a long time since I never actually tried it. So I went back to tried and tested shingles method. This took about 2 hours to cut, prepare and glue all these shingles on the roof. Would take far far more if I laid every single shingle, every single shingle one by one. <laughs> Which I actually plan to do so, piece by piece looks far better but I was on a timetable to complete this project. For the extension part of the tavern, I wanted it to look slightly different than the main part of the building. So I covered its roof with sticks to make it look more like it's an extension of the building. Close the meeting point of the shingles with chopsticks and more steering sticks. For the stonework, I cut bricks out of styrofoam, less than one by half centimeters in size each. Then gave them the usual rock tumbling treatment to soften the edges of each brick. Then I went down to a path an insane man would take to lay every single brick on the wall. It would have been much easier if there wasn't any occasional diagonal sticks blocking the way, but hey, anything for an appealing final result. Once the glue of the brickwork dried, I treated it with Vallejo Black Primer. For the main stone color, I prepared a rather lighter tone of grey from craft paints, and painted the entire thing with semi-hard brush strokes. I still wanted to keep some of the black color showing from the gaps. With this diorama build, I wanted to have and reflect some fun. So I painted random bricks with different earthy pastel colors I mixed randomly along the way. When I work with medieval creations, it just is usually stonework and most of the time end up being regular boring grey tones. 
maybe next time when I make a castle tower or something like that I would just go out of my way of historical accuracy and go for a red or I don't know purple building With the stonework done, I started painting the shingles on the roof. For this, I mainly went for two tones of dark red. Then, just like the bricks, I decided to paint some of the shingles with different colors. I actually kind of wanted to paint the roof with a blue for some reason, then I hesitated to do so and stuck with a regular brick like color D. After the shingles, I painted the extension's roof planks with a diluted Vallejo wood grain color. And painted the windows and doors with a brown mixture of paints. I don't remember which paints I exactly mixed for this. I laid bricks around the smokestack and added a top cover for it of the camera and painted it with Vallejo bronze. In order to finalize a tavern I applied a dark red filter on the roof and a dark grey filter on the stonework. Before I was done, I applied some mud green weathering powder to the bottom parts of the build to represent accumulated dust and dirt. So once the building itself is out of the way, I started on making the only tree that I planned for this diorama build. For this, I'm using actual tree branches I pick up while I'm taking the dog for a walk or on a stroll. I try to find the best angles for the shape I have in mind, which bulk of the tree leaning over the curved roof of the tavern. So I cut and glue various branches together with the help of CA glue and baking soda as usual. Once the body of the tree is done and completely dried, I started working on the greenery. A while ago I made this foliage, so to say, from polyester to cover the top of the tree. I cut rather random sections from it and glued them on the tree. I forgot to paint the trunk before gluing these, so I mixed the black and black red paints and painted the sections the brush could reach. Although I didn't realize that the glue didn't dry completely and ruined the perfectly good brush. Then with the help of hairspray I added my homemade flock. If you need to know how I make my flock, you can find my tutorial video at the top right corner or in the video description. Finally, I applied more hairspray to seal most of the loose flock on the tree. I wanted to make a sign for this tavern and wanted to give it a name. So I googled random tavern name generator, there is one, <laughs> and came up with angry Nixie name which I really liked, so I sized the dimensions and printed the name in an appropriate font. I plan to make a sign right above the main entrance and one facing the street so everyone both walking by and just about to enter would see it, or at least that's how I imagined this. So I glued the printout design onto cardboard, then glued a frame around it to add depth to it and then made a little hanging arm for one of them out of steering sticks. This is actually my second attempt at this, first being the one I made for the uh, Age of Empires Town Center video. Video link is up there if you haven't seen it yet. For the one that goes above the door, I did the same, only it would be directly glued on the wall instead of being hung from above. I also cut and glued some more sticks to make a feeding trout for the horses of the travelers spending time in the tavern. And a log or whatever it's called for the horses to be tied up. Made some wooden fences to decorate the diorama further. And painted them mostly with Vallejo wood green color. 
So, for the figures, I'm going to use Adelaide's Arab Warriors, Mongol Cavalry, Mini Arts French Knights and Cavalry figures I used before. I recently bought Zvezda's Numidian Cavalry. I'll turn one into a civilian figure, as well as World War I British Infantry again for a civilian figure. So I painted them all with Vallejo Grey Primer. Next, I randomly painted their outfits and armor. I wanted these figures to be something like two different factions, one side Oriental, the Arabic and Mongolian ones, riding a camel and a horse, dueling Oriental warrior, building a scimitar, or however it's pronounced. The other side being Occidental knights, heavy plate armors, armored horses, Especially the dueling knight building a two-handed axe in a swinging position caught my eye for this scene. So, in order to build a base, I cut up a section from plywood board sheet slightly bigger than an A4 paper size. Sadly, the last plywood board I was donated are quite bent and distorted. Still, I found a section that is not as much bent and cut off that part. To go over the plywood, I cut off the same size of foam core. Then I drew the outlines to carve out a section of the foam core for where the road will be. I glued both pieces together. Once it dried, I applied some PVA glue to prepare the base for raw texture. For this, I used active carbon granules and crumbled wall plaster. I applied water damp PVA glue to both strengthen the road part and to apply ground flock. The reason for this glue to be green is that I used the same dripper for transferring paint and Turns out it wasn't fully cleaned out and dried green paint was activated by the watered down PVA glue or water in the PVA glue atom. Either way, green color added a nice color saturation in the final result. I applied static grass over the ground flock. Before I was done with the base, I painted the edges. Notice how terribly damaged the plywood board. It's actually an easy fix, but I didn't bother with it. I'm not making a piece to be displayed in a museum, so this would suffice. Finally, here's the part where everything comes and binds together. I start with installing the signs first. I glued the tavern onto the base. And of course, as usual, there were gaps here and there, and more. As I explained before, the plywood board being bent, it affected the building too. There are more gaps than I imagined there would be. So I'm filling those gaps up with extra dirt, moss like flock and homemade grass. It also looks more saturated by the end. It would look awkward to see the ground or soil and then see the building starting right away. Naturally, there would be dirt reaching upwards and vegetation overgrowing. I also thought about making millipot vines, but I almost always add that detail, so I wanted to skip that cliche this time. I also added the trout I made and the horse tying log. Someone please tell me what this is called. I added the fences I made, I intentionally made one badly broken, but looking at it now, I should have painted these fences with a um, more worn down paint, it looks way too brand new. Next I added the figures in their respective position, 
To be honest, I thought I had more space for the riders here. They ended up kinda too close to the dueling ones. In my mind, I pictured these two fighting off their disagreements and their respective comrades watching it happen from a safe distance. It kinda looks like they're about to intervene, but hey, still looks like a decent brawl. Would end up with a couple of limbs chopped off at the end, but yeah, a decent brawl. I also wanted some civilian bystanders, so I placed one close to the brawl and one a bit far away in a shouting position, as if he's calling over people to join the spectacle. I placed the only tree I imagined and made for this build and made sure it's overreaching towards the roof. The roof of the extension part looked too empty and boring. I added some flock and dried leaves on it to add extra detail. Finally did the same to the main roof of the tavern. Okay wow, uh, so that's it for this video. It ended up being a fantastic build which took about 40 hours spread across 4.5 days with a lot of blue fingers, aching back and shoulders. <laughs> As usual, thank you for being here and watching. I want to remind you that I'm planning on selling this piece. I successfully shipped Age of Empires builds from Turkey to Germany and Greece. I think it's safe to say that I found a way to pack and ship what I made abroad safe and secure. So. If you're interested, you can contact me or I am open for brand new diorama commissions as well. Even if not, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.